All right, welcome in. This video is a, a tutorial on how to create daily fantasy projections for the NBA. Uh, this is probably one of the questions I get the most is where do I start on making NBA projections? Where do I get all my information and my data from? Um, and how best to put that together? So uh, I think people who are looking to improve their game, looking to get better, realize how important it is to have projections, um, whether they, they be your own or somebody else's, but especially for the NBA. Uh, the NBA is certainly not predictable, but it is the most predictable sport sport. Uh, you know, players usually play to their averages. Um, things are very common. The range of outcomes is, is much smaller in the NBA than it is compared to the NFL or Major League Baseball, which are just, you know, completely random games. So to have projections for the NBA is, is pretty important. So here is what your final product is going to look like as we talk about this. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to show you guys. Um, this is like the third or fourth time I've tried to record this video and they all go very long. Um, so I'm just trying to give you the crash course on where to get started and how to start putting this together. Um, so this is what your final product is going to look like. Uh, these are very basic projections. You can you can get as advanced as you want. You can get as simple as you want. Um, but these are a really cool place to start. And they're going to they're gonna basically um, be based on three different factors. And those factors are going to be um, how well their opponent plays against a position. Uh, so, for example, Anthony Davis, a power forward, is going to be playing against Dallas this evening. Uh, Dallas surrenders 1.2 times the league average of DraftKings points to the powered forward position. So in theory, that would give Anthony Davis a pretty significant boost for this evening, a 20% boost. Um, we're going to take into account the average, or the average line, uh, Las Vegas over under, and tonight's line. Um, this is a really important one, and this is probably my favorite. Uh, Las Vegas is really good at predicting the outcome of games, or at least how many points are going to be scored. Uh, they, they, they get very close. Um, you don't see sports books go out of business very often. They do a pretty good job at it. Uh, so we're going to use that information to our advantage. So for example... Um, see if I can find a good one. Uh, here we have Steph Curry. Steph Curry plays for the Golden State Warriors. They almost always have a massive over-under. Their average line is about 212. Uh, tonight's line is 221. So that is a big difference. That is a big boost. So you're going to see this when teams like um, maybe Memphis, who plays a little slower, Utah plays a little slower. When they play uh, faster paced teams or teams with worse defenses, they're going to get a big boost um, in terms of what their line is on that given night compared to their average line. Um, I like using the line because it takes into account a lot of factors. So if you use the Vegas over under, you can basically get rid of a lot of different factors that you don't have to mess around with. Um, Las Vegas is taking everything into consideration. They're taking in um, injuries, you know, historical historical information, how well teams have been playing, how fast teams play. They're taking everything into account for you and they're kind of putting a numerical value on it. So that's why I really like to use uh, the Vegas line because it's, it's, it really simplifies this process. And then finally, um, we are going to project or we're going to use projections of how many minutes a player is going to play. Um, it's the NBA. You need to be on the court to score points um, and you need to play a lot of minutes to score a lot of points. Basically, it's not like the NFL where you can you maybe as a wide receiver play three snaps, um, catch three balls for 100 yards and two touchdowns. And you had a massive day, yet you only stepped on the field uh, three times. So basketball certainly or fantasy sports in general are all about opportunity. Um, the NBA is probably the most about opportunity because, of course, you can't score from the bench. So those are the three things that we're really taking into account. Um, and quickly on, on the minutes, this is going to be really interesting to help you find value plays. Um, so you can see Anthony Davis scores uh, 1.2 points per minute, and he scores, or and he plays about, or we're projecting him to play about 38 minutes tonight. Um, if he were to get injured, if he were to be ruled out before this game, we could find his backup, and maybe his backup also scores maybe a, a point per minute, uh, but he only plays 15 minutes. Well, if he gets an extra 20 minutes of playing time tonight, uh, he could, you know, potentially or uh, in theory, score 20 more points. So it's really important to have um, how many DraftKings points or FanDuel points, whatever you're using, um, per minute. That way, when we project how many minutes a player is going to play for that evening, it translates really nicely. 
Okay, so let's talk about where we get this information, and then we'll talk about how to put it all together. Um, so for the minutes, uh, I like to use NumberFire, and I'll actually go to their site here. Uh, this is NumberFire. Um, so if you go to the top, they have a, a NBA section, and then they have their projections, and then uh, I believe it's daily basketball projections, but it'll get you here. And what they're doing is, I don't really care about this stuff. I don't care about the points, rebounds, whatever they project. Um, I don't know what goes into that. And I'm sure, you know, they might be great. They might be terrible. I really don't know. I like to have something that I know what goes into it. Um, I can tweak myself and, and I'm not reliant on somebody else. But what I really like here is the minutes column. And this is uh, number fire projecting how many minutes a player is going to play tonight or that evening. Um, and they actually do a pretty good job with this. Uh, they're, they're fairly accurate. But what I like is that um, they update this throughout the day. So if, you know, this is, this is, it's pretty early in the morning here so that you've got all your studs in here. If for, if for whatever reason, like Chris Paul is, uh, nursing a groin injury. If for whatever reason we find out he has a setback and he's not going to play tonight, uh, you'll see this this drop to 30 or drop from 36 to zero. And maybe Jamal Crawford, um, he would go from, Let's see if I can find him. He can go from 18.9. Maybe he goes up to like 27 minutes. So number five is actually pretty good at this. Um, they update this throughout the day. So this is information that you can grab, uh, especially as it gets closer to um, tip off that you are going to want to plug into your projections. So um, I just put that right here in the number fire tab. I literally just copy and paste it into um, a one here. And we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about these in a second. But this is literally just a copy and paste job from number fire. Okay, we need to get uh, we need to get all the player stats. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting this from uh, Basketball Reference. It's literally this page. It is um, this season's per game statistics for everyone in the league. Uh, you can see it's got how many rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, points, all that good stuff, uh, minutes uh, that they play per game. So that is very valuable information. Um, I am pulling this over. Uh, I'm using Google Documents, and uh, they have an import HTML function. So basically, here is that function. Um, this will update every time the basketball reference page updates. Um, so it's a, it's a really handy tool. You don't have to touch it after you set it up. Um, so basically, that information pulls in right here. And then all I do is I use... Um, a little bit of a, of a of a function I go through and just determine how many DraftKings points per minute a player is going to score. Um, so let's see if we can find a better example here. Here's LaMarcus Aldridge. So here's Aldridge. So this is just the DraftKings scoring formula. So AD times one, uh, that's points. So one point for every point that he scores. Um, L7, what's that? Three-pointers. Uh, Marcus Aldridge has, hasn't hit a three-pointer yet. Uh, X7 is what? Total rebounds. So that's times 1.25. So what we're doing is right here, this is all how many DraftKings points per game LaMarcus Aldridge averages. Uh, if you can see right here, it tells you it's 31.6. Uh, the final step is to then divide that by the number of minutes that he plays per game, which is right here, which is H7, which is 32.6. You press enter, and we find out that LaMarcus Aldridge is a, almost a one DraftKings point per minute player. So that's important. It's important to have this information because if LaMarcus Aldridge is going to play 20 minutes or 35 minutes, it's going to make for a big difference. So that's the only thing I do to this tab is just put that formula in, drag it all the way down, um, and I have how many points per minute a player scores. Okay, now uh, the positional breakdowns, the uh, the game logs, which is what I use for the average uh, lines, the average over-unders. That information is all available on my site. Um, for those of you who don't know, DFS On Demand, that is the site that I run and created. Um, basically, it has analysis. It's got tools, um, a bunch of stuff that I talk about. It's just an easy place to find it all. Uh, so it's DFS On Demand. It's under the Pro Tools section. So these are Pro Tools. Um, it's 8 bucks a month, which is you know literally nothing if you're playing uh, NBA every single night. That means you're getting, uh, you know, position breakdowns, you're getting the salary database, you're getting the game logs, uh, everything for every sport. I mean, that's like, you know what, 20 cents a day or something like that. So I suggest you get it. But anyway, 
Um, the NBA points allowed by pos by position uh, is right here. It's on the site <clears throat> as it loads. So you can just copy and paste this off the site uh, or I'll make it available for download. Um, and basically all I do is then I plug that into, let's see if I can get this back here. Uh, into this spreadsheet. Basically, I do it by each position. I have point guard. Um, again, I'm just copy and pasting this in. Point guard, shooting guard. If you scroll down, I have small forward, uh, power forward, and of course, center. And the only uh, the only other thing I'm doing here is I am uh, averaging out uh, every team in the league. So basically, what this what this shows is is real quick. Um, here's every, every night that the Clippers play, here's how many points they give up to centers. So you can see some nights they get shredded, some nights, uh, they do okay, but we average it out to get 51 points per game. So the Clippers give up 51 points per game to, to, um, centers on DraftKings. Uh, that's significantly higher than the league average, which is only 36 points. Uh, so it's interesting to note that if you play the Clippers in theory, you know, you're going to get this significant boost um, over the league average or over what another team in the league might be uh, because they're so bad at defending the position. Now, as more information comes in here, um, this will start to level out early here, early in the season with only five or six games as a sample size. Uh, you know, the matchup stuff is pretty drastic. So kind of take it with a grain of salt this early in the season. Um, for example, the Pelicans against point guards. Um, the Pel they've been terrible. They've been really bad, but in their defense, uh, they've also faced Steph Curry twice. So that kind of hurts them a little, uh, hurts them a lot. Um, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but of course, you know, as the season goes on, this is going to be very valuable information. Uh, so game logs and average lines. Again, I use, uh, that's all available on DFS on demand. Uh, here is kind of what a game log looks like and I'll, Shrink this up a little bit so you can see. Uh, basically, every game played by every player this season and last season is available on DFS On Demand. You can see Al Horford uh, scored 41 and a half points against, um, I have the column hidden, but whoever it was this night. Um, but what the information I'm looking for here is what was the spread and what was the over-under. So we're using this to get uh, the average line. So this is actually pretty close. The average line for Atlanta is 196.7. This game was 197 and a half. So a very small boost, if anything, that's probably negligible. <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about how to actually put this together. Now that we have some of the information, what you're going to want to have is a tab just for the salaries. Excuse me. Um, this is literally just the DraftKings salary. When you export it from DraftKings into CSV format, I copy and paste it in here. The only thing that's different is I am uh, asking column G. I'm just saying, give me whatever is in A2, and then I'm dragging that down, A3, A4. Basically, all I want is the position of the player to be on the right side of the player's name, and you'll see why uh, in a little bit. Okay. The functions tab, this is pretty important. Um, so if you see, I'm just going to go across the top here and you can pause it if you need to get the functions. I don't want to spend too much time on this um, because I know this video is probably going to run pretty long. Okay, all I'm asking it to, to do is pull over information from this tab, from the DK salaries tab. So that's all it's doing. Whatever is in these cells, it is pulling over. And basically it gives us a, a, a duplicate of whatever was in um, that CSV file from DraftKings. Now the goal on the, on this tab is to get this information. So this game information, who is playing who I want these two teams into separate columns. I want new Orleans in its own column in its own cell. And I want Dallas in its own cell. So the way we start to do that is we split this. So we split D. So if you can see, all we're doing is a, as a split function, we're saying split D on the character, which is the at sign. So um, as you can see, it did exactly what we asked. It gave us New Orleans and then gave us the rest of the information after the at sign in another cell. So we're getting closer. All we want to do is we want to split that again, split F2, this time by a space, literally quotation, space, quotation. Uh, it will give us Dallas and then it'll give us the time by itself. So that's very good. Um, now this is where it gets a little tricky here. And I'll, again, pause it if you need to, to, to plug these functions in as I scroll through, 
the if function is the very important one. Um, basically, this is just away versus home team, away at home team. It, you know, Anthony Davis plays for New Orleans, but that doesn't mean his team is going to be first here. Uh, for example, DeMarcus Cousins does not play for Golden State. This is literally just away at home. Um, so what we're doing here with this if function is we're trying to determine who the opponent is, who Anthony Davis's opponent is. This column K here, uh, this is just coming over from the DK salaries tab. Um, this is the information that, and I'll flip back real quick. This is the information that DraftKings gives you. So we know for sure Anthony Davis plays for New Orleans. They give us that. It would be great if in the next column they gave us the opponent, but they do not. We'll do it ourselves. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. If function, so literally all this says is um, if New Orleans matches the team that we know, we know that the opponent is the other team, Dallas. Um, if not, use whatever is in E2. So basically, we know that Anthony Davis plays for either Team 1 or Team 2. Uh, DraftKings tells us that he plays for this team. So if that matches Team 1, we know that his opponent is Team 2. And if it matches Team 2, we know his opponent is Team 1. So that may or may not make, make sense. I don't want to waste too much time on it. Use this function. All it's going to do is get you uh, the opponent, which is going to be very valuable information. So now we have the player, the position, the salary, the team that he plays for, and his opponent all in different columns. That is going to come in handy later. So this tab, uh, whenever you paste something into the salaries tab, all this information is going to update and it's going to be very easy for you. So this is a very important tab to work with. Again, if you need more time, uh, pause the video, grab these functions. You should be able to figure it out pretty easily. <clears throat> all right, now let's start putting this all together. Again, uh, this is probably the the column or the uh, yeah the column headers there or the row headers that you want to ro roll with here. Um, <clears throat> So everything pulls off of, I like to do it off of name. So again, I just have it pulling whoever is the first name in, uh, in this tab right here. So in the functions tab, whoever the first name is Anthony Davis, we're pulling that over. Uh, so if you drag that down, you start getting all the information on everyone. Okay. Um, I've already sorted this a couple times, so I don't want to mess it up. So just drag it down. Uh, the PF, the position, um, <clears throat> you want to use DraftKings position as opposed to maybe basketball references positions uh, because they will be different. So we want to use DraftKings positions. So we're using the VLOOKUP function. The VLOOKUP is incredibly handy for um, all things daily fantasy, quite honestly. So all we're telling this to do, and I'll, I'll actually go down here so maybe we can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> We are looking for uh, whatever name is in this column, which is B72. Of course, it's blocked off. Here we go. B72, which is Paul Millsap. Um, we're saying look for Paul Millsap in this range. So the range is DK salaries um, right here. The range is going to be – here, I'll do it for you real quick. <clears throat> we'll do it for Anthony Davis. Um, okay, so we're saying V look up for Anthony Davis's name, comma in this tab or in this range right here. So make sure you go over and when you go over, start to count. So this is column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Go through the whole range. So now it's going to look for Anthony Davis anywhere within this range. And when it finds Anthony Davis, uh, it's going to pull across the 12th column. And it should say power forward. There it is. Make sure you put in the uh, dollar signs here so that the range never changes when you drag this down. And again, you'll see it should all work. Steph Curry's a point guard. Clay Thompson's is a shooting guard. All the way down uh, until you have everybody. <clears throat> Okay, same thing for points per minute. It's VLOOKUP. We are just looking for Anthony Davis on a different tab, which is the basketball reference tab. Uh, again, the range is going to be slightly different. Um, it's going to be bigger. It's actually going to be this huge range, and I've already counted across. It is row 30. Uh, so if we go through this range here, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Anytime it finds Anthony Davis in this range, it's going to give you row 30 which I hope is going to be 1.28, which was exactly what it was before, so we know that it's right. Again, make sure that the range doesn't change. 
put in the dollar signs. Uh, just to confirm it, that should be 1.83. These aren't changing, so we know we did it right. <clears throat> Salaries, same thing. We're looking for Anthony Davis, but this time we're looking for him in the range of DraftKings salaries. So we're going to go back to the salaries. We're going to look in this range here. When it finds Anthony Davis, give us column number two, which is whatever his salary is. Okay, so just, you can see how important the VLOOKUP is. For this purpose, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to, um, you know, it's doing all the, all the work to look for the player for you. And when it finds it, it's returning the information that you want, um, testing it to make sure that it's doing it correctly. <clears throat> okay, so far, so good. Let's go to target value here. Uh, I like to use six times. I'm pretty optimistic. If you're unfamiliar with value, um, it's it's pretty simple. We're looking for a certain number of points based off the $50,000 that DraftKings lets us spend. Uh, for basketball, cash games, 50-50s, heads up. Uh, you, you, you can usually get away with like 250, 260, maybe 270. That's going to cash you a lot of times. Um, 300 is going to start getting you in the range of potentially winning a GPP, uh, one of those big tournaments, or uh, at least getting you close, giving you a sweat. Obviously, different nights, you know, high scoring nights and, and large slates, it's going to take more points. But if you locked me in for 300 points every single night, I would make a ton of money. So that's kind of what I go with six times value. So basically, for $50,000, um, for every $1,000 you spend, you want to get six points back. So that's exactly what we did here. We took Anthony Davis's salary, we divided it by 1,000. So we get 10.6, and we need six points for every $1,000. So six times 10.6 means Anthony Davis needs to score 63 points tonight to pay for himself. Is he going to do that? Well, we'll see when we get over there. <laughs> um, tonight's minutes. Okay, this is coming from the number fire uh, sheet, which of course we need to do a little more work on again. Um, so very quickly here, this is what happens when you paste it in. Um, you get this information. This is we're doing it. Uh, we're doing a little work. So again, we're splitting the cell. We want to get Steph Curry by himself. We don't want his position to be in the same cell as him. Uh, so we split on the character of a parentheses. So that's that first character there. So basically, that gives us Steph Curry by himself. Now, what you'll notice is this is this always trips everyone up. Uh, there's, if you look at this, it's actually, you have to look at how this cell is actually listed. It's Steph, Stephen Curry space parenthesis. Uh, we have split it on the parenthesis, but that space still exists. So this cell, you can't see it, but is actually not just Stephen Curry. It's Stephen Curry and a space at the end right here. And that will mess up all of your functions because, um, it won't match. When we search for Steph Curry later, we're not going to find Steph Curry. We're going to find Steph Curry with a space at the end, and that's going to ruin your V lookups and all that stuff. So we take one more step and we trim whatever is in K4 right here. So the trim function that is, uh, it removes all the space before and after the characters. So it actually gives us exactly what we're looking for, which is just Steph Curry. I know it doesn't make much sense, but I promise you that will mess up all of your functions later. Um, and then finally, all I do is I tell it to pull over, give me whatever is in uh, C4, and then it scroll down C5, C6, C7, of course. So that is Steph Curry, uh, or Stephen Curry, and how many minutes number fire projects him to play tonight. Right there in two columns, nice and handy. So when we come over here, of course, we do another V lookup, and we are looking for... Anthony Davis in the range on this column. It's actually over here. Uh, when it finds Anthony Davis, we are going to ask it to give us uh, whatever is in column two. Uh, so in this case, Anthony Davis is right here. It should shoot back 38.7 Whoops, 38.7 minutes, which it gives you a little preview. You know we got it right. Um, putting in the dollar signs here. And then, of course, we can drag it down. Of Nothing changes. Actually, Dwight Howard changes because I put that in myself um, because he wasn't updated on number fire yet, but don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> team. Um, this is obviously what team they play for. So here is a good example. Um, Chris Paul, again, we're pulling it from the functions tab. So the next two are what we did all that work for on the functions tab. We are looking for Chris Paul 
And when it finds Chris Paul, we're asking it to pull over uh, what team he plays for, which is right here. And then in the next uh, column, which opponent he plays for. Now, this could get a little tricky here because I'll give you an example. Let me sort these by team real quick. Um, so since we're pulling our information from all different sites, we're pulling it from number fire, we're pulling it from basketball reference, we're pulling it from DFS on demand, uh, pulling it from DraftKings. not everyone uses the same abbreviations. So for example, <clears throat> Charlotte, a lot of times is listed as uh, CHA, SHA. So when this pulls, when this pulls over, you're going to get an error message and it's going to say, we don't recognize this. Uh, basically, whatever range you're looking for, you just have to make sure that it matches. Um, so basically, um, the lines are coming from information on DFS on demand, which is using CHO um, as opposed to CHA. So I just manually go in and change this. It's pretty simple. Um, a lot of times, um, San Antonio might come over as SA. I change it to SAS. Uh, no big deal. Again, New Orleans is one of those teams. It'll be NO instead of NOP. Golden State will be GS instead of GSW. So just a handful of teams every night. Brooklyn could be BKN or BRK. So just pay attention. Um, make sure that the, uh, the team abbreviation that you're looking for is the one that's actually being used in the range that you're looking for. It's good. It's probably going to mess you up the first couple times, but you'll get used to it. Okay. <clears throat> Moving right along. Uh, this is a little, a little hairy here. Um, <clears throat> so this is what we're looking for. The, how many points a play or a, a, a team gives up to a specific position and not just how many points, but what, um, what it is against the league average. Okay, for this, I highly recommend that you sort this by position. Um, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So we are going through the offensive or the, uh, the, the excuse me, the DraftKings points that each, each team allows to each position. So here's the, um, here's the formula. Basically, what we're looking for is we're looking for Washington, H63, in uh, this range, and it's the positions range. <clears throat> so remember, we're looking for centers. So don't go by point guards. Uh, scroll down here to centers. Grab uh, this range. So we're looking for um, Washington. So we have to give it the range, <clears throat> which is here. So here's all the teams and all of how many uh, points that they give up on an average night. That's column 38. The other step is you're going to want to... Uh, divide this by the average game. Uh, so all I did is I took the extra step. Sorry, I probably should have talked about this first. I took the extra step in here, and all I did is I averaged out all the teams. Okay, so this is everybody by center. The average game surrendered is 36 fantasy points. Um, so that makes more sense when you're over on this tab. So you're getting, you're doing the V lookup, and you're doing it by position. Um, right here. So we, we defined the range. We're saying, give us com 38, which is how many points they allow per game. And then when we get that, we're dividing it by, uh, the average game. So what the final outcome is, is that Washington surrenders 0.7, 70% of the league average. So Washington is very good against centers. Um, so that is going to hurt Al Horford's, uh, out, you know, potential production for tonight pretty significantly. Again, that's a pretty a uh, big difference. 70% of the league average is pretty big. As more games come in, uh, that will start to, you know, level itself out. Okay. So you do that for every position, go through, uh, define the range. When you get down here, make sure that you now change the range to wh wherever your power forwards are. Change this to the average power forward game. Um, when you get down to the next position, you're going to do it again differently. It's going to be point guards. So very important that you are using the correct, okay, I had it right, using the correct information uh, that or for that position. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, finally, we're almost finally, um, this is the only thing I'm really doing, you know, really manually is I'm entering tonight's lines. So basically, go to covers or your favorite uh, website to get um, to get tonight's over unders, sort by team, 
Uh, 205 is going to be the number for Atlanta and Washington. So I literally just drop and drag that in there. And then I scroll down to Washington and put it there as well. It's going to be 205. Um, average line that is coming from uh, DFS on demand. Basically, all I'm telling it is uh, you okay. So, this is an average if function. What it's saying is um, give me the average if for four Atlanta, which is here, uh, or whatever is in F2, if it's uh, for this entire range of F, and then when you get that, when you get that, when you find it. Um, give me what is the average of everything in column A, J here. Sorry, I think I hit a little typo. So when you have that, uh, it will pump out 196.77. Okay, so now it's it's going to be very repetitive. Uh, Atlanta 196.77 is going to be in every single Atlanta column, but that's going to make it very easy easy for us to do a V lookup. So again. What we're looking for now is uh, what team they are in the range that we've defined, which can be, you know, this entire thing. There's thousands of games, but once you get everybody, uh, it shouldn't be a problem here. Uh, and then what column you want, which is actually 32. I've got some hidden here. Um, and then you press enter and you get 196.77. So I hope that makes sense. Again, just follow the formulas. This video is already over 30 minutes. So I want to make sure I get it done. Um, follow the formulas. If you have any questions, ask me, uh, again, this is the differential. So this is, uh, basically a 4% difference. Um, so Al Horford, he's getting a terrible position, uh, downgrade, but he's getting a nice boost 4%, uh, more the, the tonight's line than the average line for the Atlanta Hawks. So you put that all together between the, uh, difference in the over under how many minutes a player is going to play and the position that they are going up against tonight. And you will get the projected points and value for this evening. So here it is. There's the formula. Uh, basically all I'm saying is take the average points per minute that Anthony Davis has, uh, multiply that by the boost or the downgrade that he is going to get from the position. Uh, when you have that, multiply it by the difference in the uh, the Las Vegas line, and then that will give us a points per minute, um, whether it be better or worse than his average, that will give us tonight's points per minute. And then you multiply that by how many points we or how many minutes we project him to play to get the final 62 projected points from Anthony Davis tonight. Uh, if he scored 62 points, it would be five times eight value. Um, of course, you can sort this by value so that you can get, um, you know, you can find your value plays here. Let's see. Uh, Dwight Howard is very reasonable tonight. Um, John Henson, a guy for only $3,800. Again, we're projecting 16 minutes. Uh, gets a big boost from the position, so he would go for seven and a half times value if he scored 28 points tonight. Again, take these with a grain of salt early in the season. Um, the matchups are pretty jacked up. Um, the lines are pretty good, but you know, th the small sample size kind of makes some of these projections um, a little wild. So uh, they will get better as the season goes along. I know I just completely dumped a ton of information at you. Um, it, go, take your time. This this takes me one or two hours to set up every season and then probably another 15 or 20 minutes of maintenance every single day um, to come in here and update everything. So it's going to take time. I hope that in 30 minutes I explained that to you uh, to the best of my knowledge. Again, pause the video. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me on DFS On Demand. Um, leave a comment, whatever you need to do. Um, real quickly here, there is one thing I like to add and it's the player news. Uh, we're importing a feed from Roto world. Uh, so this is Roto world's news feed. Uh, this will update as they update. So you can quickly come over here and see, uh, okay. Kyle Corver's is probably going to play tonight. Uh, Mark Gasol looks like he's probable, et cetera, et cetera. All of the information that you might need to help you make your decisions, uh, especially around injuries is going to be right there at your fingertips. So there you go. I hope that helps. I hope that made it clear. Uh, reach out if you have any questions. Best of luck. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.